Hey everyone, my name is Caleb and I'm really excited to talk to you about what was for me probably the single most effective tool or spiritual practice connected to making disciples in the workplace and that is sharing your testimony. Now, if you've been around church world, you've heard testimonies, stories of what God's doing and probably had somebody tell you, hey, you need to get in the practice of being able to share that with other people. Uh, but I know for me, and I imagine this is true for people watching this video, it's one thing to hear teachings about that, it's another to put it into practice, and particularly to learn how to do it in the context of the workplace. And I remember right after finishing up graduate school, I got my first job in Washington, D.C. Uh, it was at a, a big think tank, nonprofit, kind of corporate type environment. And uh, I started to build relationship with my coworkers and just seek God, Lord, how do you want to touch these people with your love. And I didn't know every tool or strategy at the time, uh, but one thing that I felt pretty convinced of was I could be really bold with sharing the stories of places that God had brought transformation in my own life. And so for several months, I remember one particular coworker that I used every opportunity I could get to share another angle on my story uh, of, of God transforming my life. And he probably got really tired of it. I mean, all the time I was just like, hey, I'm. I know you're feeling that way. Let me tell you about a time I felt that way. And God really did something powerful in my life as a result. Well, we started to build a relationship. I'd been praying for this guy for several months. And I remember being on a work trip and just really feeling faith in my heart. Hey, it's a window for this, this guy. God wants to meet with him. I remember we were sitting down at a meal and I just really boldly said, hey man, you have heard me so many times talk about the transformation that God's done in my life. And I know that you've asked me questions about it. I know that you've been thinking about it. What's the barrier for you? Like what's, what's the blockage to leaning in and responding to God? And I remember he got really vulnerable with me and said that he'd seen hypocrisy and dysfunction in the church and it just gave him no interest in learning more about God. And I remember us sitting and talking and saying, hey, the church can be full of really broken people and I'm so sorry about that experience, but have you ever read the Bible for yourself? Have you ever tried to look into who is Jesus, and he hadn't. And we started to read the book of John together, and we'd meet once, maybe a couple times a week, uh, in our office uh, to read John and talk about who Jesus was. And I just remember God working on this guy's uh, heart and life as a result. And I share that story because I didn't do anything super sophisticated. Uh, I just shared as often as I could the stories of places that God had brought transformation in my life. And that's the power of a testimony. And what I wanna do in this video is just give you a couple of biblical reasons, the why that we should want to share test our testimony of transformation in our lives uh, as often as we can. And then I wanna leave you with a couple of tools uh, to think through about how do I actually put this into practice? How can I get more in the habit of sharing my testimony and looking for opportunities to do that in my workplace. So first, why do we share testimonies? Well, let me just give you a couple of reasons biblically. One, Jesus deserves honor and glory. I, I love this passage in Psalm 40 verse nine. It says, I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. And all throughout the word of God, we see this process of it is right to proclaim, to remember what God has done. So even for no other reason than he's worth his stories being told, we want to be in the practice of sharing our testimony. And the workplace is not outside of that. That's a space where, man, it, God deserves glory there. The, the second reason uh, is that it releases faith. And I love, one of my favorite stories connected to testimonies in the Bible is in John chapter four. This is the story of the woman at the well. We, we're probably all familiar with this story. Uh, Jesus meets her. He gives her some words of knowledge. She says, you know, she's blown away. She goes back to the town of Samaria. And in, in John 4, 39, it says, many believed because of the woman's testimony. And she said, come meet this man who told me everything that I ever did. Uh, a little bit further on, it says the people of the town come. They ask Jesus to stay with them for a couple of days. And there's this beautiful passage where they say, hey, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe, but we've come to see and know for ourselves who Jesus is. And that's the power of the testimony. This woman had an encounter with Jesus. She shared it boldly with the people in her community and it released this deposit of faith. There must be something out here that we need to know more of 
and people responded. They leaned in and they met with Jesus. Another beautiful example, John chapter 1, Philip goes to uh, Nathanael and he says, We found him, this one, who Moses and the law and the prophets wrote about. He's Jesus of Nazareth. Nathanael, you know, being skeptical, says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Like, come on, man. And Philip just says these words, Come and see. And Nathanael has this encounter with Jesus as a result. But it's another example of somebody proclaims, I've encountered something different in Jesus. There's a deposit of faith released. Somebody comes to Jesus as a result and they meet him and their life's transformed. So it releases faith. The, the third one is it provides comfort. I love this passage in 2 Corinthians 1. Uh, Paul says, "Who talking about God comforts us in all of our afflic- affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So when we share our testimony, we are extending the invitation to be comforted in the same way that we have. And this is something that's so key. And even with the story that I shared earlier, I would often look for where are places of pain in my coworkers and how can I put out a seed, an olive branch of hope? Hey, I've actually met someone who met me in that same place and brought me comfort as a result. That's the power of the testimony, right? So Jesus deserves honor and glory. It releases faith. It provides comfort. The, the final one I want to leave us with is it comes with power. Uh, famous passage in Revelation. It says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death. We see this beautiful combination of the power of the blood of Jesus, uh, that all sufficient blood that washes us, cleanses us, and the word of our testimony releasing a, a overcoming power when it's paired with this heart that says, I love not my life unto death. I'm going to live a life of full surrender. So there's an overcoming grace. And what I love about that is that means there's power for me when I share my testimony, but there's also this beautiful overcoming grace that is released. Again, that olive branch of hope. Hey, I found overcoming strength through Jesus and you can too. That's the power of the testimony. And because of what Jesus is actively doing in our lives, if we learn how to share that with boldness, it creates, I think of it like, um, like a soil in our workplace of the grace of God and uh, opportunities for people to respond in hunger because if he did it in you, he can do it in me. Okay, so hopefully you're convinced it's worth sharing our personal testimony of how God's transformed our life. Well, then there just becomes the question, how do we do it? And I love this passage in 1 Peter 3 uh, where Peter says, listen, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that's within you. So we have this biblical mandate, be prepared. If somebody asks you, hey, why do you have this hope? Are you ready to share? And what it comes down to is I think we all think we're prepared until we have a moment where we need to share and then we're fumbling over our words and we realize, oh, I wish I actually would have thought this through. And so this is a really simple tool. uh, And what I'm going to do is offer you kind of two different ways to think about preparing to share your testimony. And you could even pause this video after I talk about one of them and go through the practice of doing it yourself. So the first one is what I'm going to call the 15 second testimony. Very simply, a 15 second testimony is here's what I was like before I met Jesus. Then I had an encounter with God. And as a result, here's how things changed in my life. And you could even right now pull out a sheet of paper or open up the notes app on your phone and write that down. What, what's one thing, uh, a place of pain in your life that you were like before you met Jesus? So one example for me uh, would be I had a lot of guilt and shame before I had a really significant encounter with the love of God. And so maybe I would share it like this. Hey, I lived under a lot of guilt and shame and always was so aware of the ways that I wanted to be perfect, but just couldn't be. But then I met Jesus and he gave me forgiveness. He showed me that he was perfect so that I didn't have to be. And now I'm able to live in so much freedom and peace of heart because even when I fail, even when there's brokenness and pain in my life, I know that Jesus has forgiven me and accepts me back into his family. Right? That's the 15 second testimony. And that could be something that even right now you could write down. Here's the pain that I 
was under. Then I met Jesus. He gave me X. And now, here's how things are different. So you can even pause the video right now and take a second and write that down. Okay, hopefully we've gone through the 15 second testimony. My encouragement would be, if you're watching this in a group context, practice it with each other. You could even call out on a few names. Hey John, tell us a 15 second testimony. Let him share. Okay, we've got the 15 second testimony as a tool in our toolkit. The other tool I wanna to talk about is contextual testimony. So what you know, what I know if you've been in the workplace is most of the time the opportunities to share this come up as people are talking about uh, or sharing different places of pain or frustration in their lives. And that's super contextual and can even be contextual to your workplace. And so a great question to ask is, Holy Spirit, what are a couple of scenarios that I need to be prepared for uh, that I can offer the hope that's in my story, the ways that I've met you and you've transformed my life. Let me give an example. In my workplace, and I don't think this is unique to Washington, D.C., anxiety was everywhere. And there was anxiety in the city. Everybody dealt with it. There was anxiety associated with our work because it was super intense and felt high pressure. You had a bunch of type A ambitious people that all felt like, man, I'm not quite measuring up to the person next to me. A lot of that can induce anxiety. And I remember having so many conversations where even as offhand comments, people would mention, man, I, I feel so, so anxious, so stressed. So let me give an example of what preparing for that could look like. Maybe somebody in your workplace says, oh gosh, like I'm just so stressed. I have all these deadlines. I don't think I'm going to be able to meet them. And boss got mad at me yesterday. And, and man, I've just been, I like, I, I can't even sleep at night. Right? Well, here's, here's my story. I could say, Hey, man, that's so tough. And I have been there. I, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, I had a super stressful few weeks at work and I was experiencing so much anxiety that I would wake up in the middle of the night with my heart racing, cold sweats. I don't know if you've ever experienced that before, but just like deep, deep turmoil on the inside. A big part of my story is I grew up in a family that was Christian. We were in church all the time. Uh, but I remember this moment where I realized God isn't just up in the sky somewhere, but he actually wants a personal relationship, a friendship with me. And he wants to walk with me closely in day-to-day -day life. And uh, for me, when I've experienced those moments of deep anxiety, I've, I've spent a lot of time just praying and saying, God, I don't have the answers of myself. There's got to, I need something from you that's solid outside of my circumstances. And when I had this moment in work, I remember one morning just asking God, God, I need help. Uh, I, I, I can't get over this anxiety myself. And uh, very simply, uh, I felt like he was leading me to spend some time. You maybe have met people that do meditations or, um, or uh, talk about you know, things that, um, that are inspiring in their life or remind themselves, hey, you're, you've got what it takes. Well, I started to meditate on who God is. And I remember just saying, okay, God, I know that you love me. I receive your love today. Or meditating on, you're the one that I'm trying to please. Not everybody else, not even myself. I, I want you to be pleased with my life. And my life isn't just about what's here. Um, actually, I'm made for eternity and I wanna live for that. And I remember for about four months, every day, I would read in the scripture about who God was and I would just pray it out loud. And I remember the anxiety reducing and peace coming into my life. And I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have God uh, to reach out to and his strength, his character, his solidity is something outside of my circumstances that never changed that has brought so much peace and confidence for me. W what do you do uh, when you experience this anxiety? Have you found a way to, to find peace in the middle of it? So there's an example uh, of a contextual aspect of my testimony, a super intense stretch I had at work and how I met God in the middle of it. I don't know what those are for you, but my encouragement as you're watching this video would be to pause and ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, what are two or three situations that you want me to prepare for, uh, to share about places in my story where you've rescued me and met with me? Again, maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it is insecurity. Uh, maybe it's uh, those feelings of, of failure, like, man, I just feel like I can never be enough. Uh, maybe it's uncertainty about the future. Uh, I have no idea. I'm 25 years old. I don't even know if this is the career that I want to be in. Uh, 
how has God met you in those places? Maybe it's pain in your family. Uh, you know, man, hey, I had a really challenging relationship. I, I don't know who that person is for you in your life, but uh, maybe your coworkers are experiencing that and God wants to use that part of your, your story to minister to them. I don't know those answers, the Holy Spirit does. And so my encouragement would be, pause and ask the Lord, what's a couple of scenarios you want me to be prepared for in my workplace? And then, same thing, practice sharing that with the people that you're walking through this with. Hey, I hope this was encouraging and helpful for you. My encouragement, again, would be there is power in your personal testimony and sharing it with confidence, with clarity, and often with the people that you work with because God wants to do it again in their lives.